Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm back with part two, finishing up this AROX 4151 8x4 tipper truck. New kit from Tamiya, fantastic kit. I had a lot of fun building it. A little harder to build than I thought it was going to be, and it took me a while, but it uh, just turned out beautiful. Uh, fantastic looking truck, runs great. I'm very pleased with how everything went together, so we'll, we'll show you how we did it. Let's get started. Well, I want to hit a few highlights of this uh, bed as I'm putting it together. Um, it, the bed is ABS, and it's, it's very heavy. It um, uses these aluminum braces that mount on the bottom. Just one of the little trick things you don't want to forget is these lock nuts drop in here before you install the rails. And if you forget them, you will be kicking yourself later. And the rails just mount on here like this. And they use these, uh, these real funny screws. They have no head, basically. And these stainless steel washers to hook them on. And the, the bed tilt bar mounts in here like this. So I'll go ahead and bolt all this together. These are uh, mounted. Um, the next thing are these trim pieces, which I've already painted. And they just mount down in here and screw in on the bottom. I painted these side ones green. I'll show you what they look like when they're finished. And then these, uh, these rails mount like this. So that's the effect when it's finished. And I decided to paint these green to match the cab for a couple reasons. One, I thought it looked good, but also it breaks up your eye when you're looking at this large expanse of, uh, of aluminum color. So I'll finish mounting the rest of these pieces. I assembled uh, one side of this frame and put the brackets on the other side. This will mount like this. And the end pieces here mount into this pivot point. The, uh, I'm not installing these yet, and I'm not installing, there's a, uh, there's a little case right here, because as we get to the actuator set, the first thing you do is remove these end pieces and remove this. So, uh, now really, uh, all I have to do is hook these two together and then it's time to go to the actuator set. So I've got my actuator set here. I'll go ahead and unpack that and we'll build it and then install it in this frame. Install this frame on the bed and then get it on the truck. There's the parts for the actuator kit. Um, I mounted the motor on the plate. There's a little addendum in the instructions that just tells you to make sure you get the the uh, motor in this position with the wires across from each other and then I, I mounted this little gear on the shaft and it mounts with a little C-clip wire clip like this which gives a new meaning to oh my word and I thought the little tiny C-clips were bad anyway I got that in there this drops in there's a shaft that fits here and this drops over it with these little balls uh, mounted in these positions here which give it a clutch effect. So what I do is I use a drop of grease and then stick the little ball on there and that acts to hold it in place while I put the assembly together. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this and uh, get this gearbox put together. Get the gearbox all assembled Man, it's like putting jewelry together. Everything fits perfect and it's really nice. Um, this tipper mechanism is interesting, but one of the things that's funny is it uses pieces from the truck kit that aren't in the tipper mechanism kit. So you couldn't, you can't build it without having the truck kit. So if you have the truck kit and you're thinking you're going to add the tipper at a later date, don't throw away any parts because some of these parts trees 
have parts that you need for this. So anyway, that just drops on that. This thing drops over there, another spacer here, and then this side goes like that. We'll get this all put together. With this bracket just bolted in here, then these arms, I, I place the spacers in them, and you just pinch them together and put them up in the frame. They just drop in. There's a cone washer that goes on the bolt, drops in from the back side, and then a big flat washer and a lock nut. That holds the assembly together. We'll do that on the other side and that gives us our bracketry. Now it looks to me like the wiring is going to come up through here and run down the main frame. So I can't attach any wiring here. It's going to be after I flip this over and put it on the, uh, on the truck. Before installing the bed one more item is this uh, switch that mounts in here. Mounting the bed is going to be really complicated. There's a lot of moving parts and wires and all kinds of other stuff that has to go in here. The switch is keyed so you can't get it in wrong. Uses a little keyed washer here. So we'll bolt that in and then I'll kind of pull the wiring up and then the bed the first thing that happens is there's a a shaft that goes through here to hold the motor and I'll have to remove the tires and wheels to, to get that through. So I'm going to bolt this on and pop off the tires and rims. Whoa! A lot of moving parts here. Um, I plug the switch in and now this motor, the first part is to pull this motor up here and drop this pin through it and then pull the bed down and these brackets here mount to the frame so and then I'll pull the wiring through later um, it's really complicated but uh, so I'll start with the motor and the pin they want me to grease this up as I put it in and then I'll I'll bolt the side frames down Wow, <laughs> there is a lot going on here. So there's one of those um, side marker LEDs that um, I previously installed when I did the wiring. They just drop into this holder like this with a lens that goes over the top. And they use these little teeny screws, um, very small, but to me it includes this little teeny screwdriver for them. So they just slot into the fender and then the fender mounting bolt slides through that hole in the in the marker light which holds it on and then those mar uh, bolts hold the fender down and there's two bolts in here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this fender and the other side fender and then I'll do the front ones. There is a lot going on down here. This is a super complicated uh, area of the truck, but uh, it looks really nice. So um, I'm pleased with that. But I'll get these fenders on, these rear fenders. One thing really nice about dump trucks is you can put them upside down and have a built-in work stand. So I pulled the wiring up, pulled the battery wiring out. To me, it gives you this little adapter plug to uh, combine the main wiring and the wiring for the uh, uh, tilt mechanism. I don't know if I'll use that or I'll solder them together. And then I've got to pull this wire up here for the tipper mechanism and this will hook to the MFC. 
so I'll route this up through the body. And then I've got a few more wires to um, tie up, but I've got all the fenders mounted and everything hooked up, the switch hooked up. So we should be just about done. We're zeroing in on it anyway. I'll uh, pull this wiring up and we'll plug it in and go through that. Well, there's my MFC-03 all plugged in. I brought the wire up for the tipper bed and plugged it into the second position right there. So now we're ready to go. And I need to... Um, Tamiya makes this little jumper we, I talked about where you can jumper the two connections together and then hook it to a battery. But I don't like to do that, so I'm going to clip this and actually solder these into one connection. just makes it a little cleaner installation for for the way I do things. So we'll get that done, and then we'll be about ready to run. I did solder those um, together, which is a lot cleaner installation. So this is the bracket that that mounts the seats, and it's designed to fit in behind the instrument panel, and when the when the body folds up, it sits in here like this and holds a seat. The problem is with the MFC, this hits. So what I did was I made a bracket out of aluminum that has a lot higher angle here um, to clear the, the MFC drilled a hole in it so I can mount it to the dash. I had to cut a few little pieces away on the bottom and trim this front out so it would fit. But now this assembly will mount in the body and when the body flips over it will sit about like that. And that way I can have my seat in there. And if to me a driver figures were not on back order I could put a driver figure in. But right now they are so that's that's okay. That's easy to add later. I countersunk this screw so a driver figure will just double sticky tape onto this and uh, that gives me my interior I was looking for plus it hides uh, a lot of the wiring and uh, I'll go ahead and paint this up and mount it and that'll uh, complete my interior. Oh also you can see the carbon fiber sticker I put to um, cover up the Tamiya logo sticker just so it, you don't see it from the outside. Um, I've been just kind of tying up the rest of the bed wiring and uh, getting all that done. So pretty much now I've got everything done underneath. My seat worked out great in the cab uh, and now there's just a couple little minor details. One of them is the is the rear uh, dump bed and uh, and then some of the detailing so I'll do that. The uh, tailgate here is one of the last major components and has this beautiful uh, metal internal part which I did not paint and then a couple of balls mount up in here and then uh, this mounts on the back end of the truck and there's two clips that mount down here in the bottom that hold the bed until the or hold the tailgate till the bed is up to a certain angle so I'm going to screw these in mount the balls the metal plate screwed on and the balls mounted and this just drops in place and that metal plate makes it nice and heavy and then these little brackets just bolt over the top to hold it in so we'll get that installed these little latches are an interesting piece they just uh, mount in here with a couple spacers they drop into this slot and the way this works is when the this rod here mounts up to the body and when it when it tilts up then it pulls the latch and the gate opens up. So I've got one side on. I'll go ahead and get this side on and that completes the bottom. Well there we go and just like that it is done. Um, you can see these two little side panels that I painted green just to kind of break up all that uh, aluminum. My switch for my bed is right here 
And it's important to note that that AC unit um, that tilts the bed is on all the time the battery's plugged in. So on this truck, it's important to unplug the battery when uh, when you're not using it. So uh, I can fire it up here. Let's turn the switch on. We'll get some startup sounds. And then I could pull this down for start. Now also, I did not put the vibration unit in. I'm leaving that out more and more often on my trucks. I just think they shake them apart. So uh, I can pull this down and go through my lights. And the second uh, light uh, operation turns on the side lights, also the dash lights, which um, I think I showed earlier and turned out really nice. And then we can turn the lights off. So, if we get a view of the front here, we'll get the upper lights, the running lights, and the headlights, and then back off again. So those work real good. Horn sound. Now also, the MFC-03 has a feature, if you pull this down, click it over, it changes the horn sound. Which is kind of cool. And then of course my lighting functions are, with this switch, are uh, down turns on all the functions, up turns on the emergency flashers. Um, of course, the turn signals. The turn signals on the MFC-03 are a little different. You actually have to pull down on this before you turn to get the turn signals to come on. And then those work. Steering, of course, works good. Throttle. Um, works nicely. So that's the main features. Now, the bed tilt um, operates also off of the transmitter. So to operate the bed tilt, you flip this switch down, pull this over, and now this stick operates the bed. And it operates it at varying speeds, so the more you push the stick, the more it goes up and down. Go back down. Engine shutdown sounds, pull this down and pull those, and that shuts it down. Start it back up. Um, the the uh, MFC-03 also has a clutch feature. If you pull this stick down, you can advance the throttle without the truck moving. And if you pull this up, then this stick acts like a clutch. This is a big truck. Um, I just put a king hauler next to it for comparison, but this truck is, is quite large. It, it, uh, it really is good size. Okay, so there it is. Uh, to me, is new AROX 4151 8x4 tipper truck. This thing was fun to build. Um, it is a builder's kit. There is a lot going on here. Um, it took a lot of little weird custom things, like to fit the MFC in, and yes, I've got my seat in there. A um, lot of painting, uh, but boy, it turned out really good. It's a beautiful truck. I left a couple little detailed things off, like the horns and a grab rail, just because um, when I ship it, uh, those things will, will potentially be damaged. But uh, yeah, everything else is on there, and uh, 
what can I say? It looks great. MFC control panels hidden in that little uh, side compartment. So there we go. Uh, thanks again for watching. Um, I appreciate uh, all my viewers. Thanks, uh, thanks again. Please subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.